the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin Mary, engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to wonderfully bless you. Very soon now you will become pregnant and have a baby boy, and you are to call him Jesus. Mary asked the angel, But how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of God will overshadow you, so the baby born to you will be utterly holy, the Son of God. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to do whatever he wants. May everything you said come true. And then the angel disappeared. You chose me to be a very special person in all of history. I don't quite understand it, why I would be the one, the mother of this baby, your precious only. Joseph learned of Mary's pregnancy. He was greatly disturbed 
and being a man of stern principle, decided to quietly break the engagement, as he didn't want to publicly disgrace her. As he lay awake considering this, he fell into a dream and saw an angel standing beside him. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't hesitate to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel commanded and brought Mary home to be his wife. Caesar Augustus, the Roman Emperor, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the nation. Everyone was required to return to his ancestral home for this registration. And because Joseph was a member of the royal line, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, King David's ancient home, journeying there from the Galilean village of Nazareth. He took with him Mary, who was obviously pregnant by this time. 
And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. the sun he is made under the sun creator of heaven and earth he is born on earth under heaven unspeakably wise yet he is wisely speechless filling the world but he lies in a manger ruler of the stars and yet he is cradled in his mother's arms
Listen, listen to Christmas. The happy sounds of this wonderful season are everywhere. The bells, the carols, the laughter of the children. At Christmas, life seems to echo the joy of that creation morn, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Looking at this little stranger Wondering if he'll be like other boys Looking down across tomorrow Knowing there will be some sorrow I still know he'll bring ten thousand 
outside the village, guarding their flock of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. Oh! 
of shepherds, the cry of an infant king, a mother's lullaby. All are the sounds of God's love. And over it all, the Christ star was shining. With quiet eloquence, that star spoke in a language that could be understood even by seekers in faraway lands. Isaiah said, The Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Ah, kings they were, coming from distant lands in search of the king. of Jerusalem, but in a humble village called Bethlehem. By the time the caravan reached its destination, many of the people of Bethlehem had forgotten the holy night and the infant king. In the bustle of their lives, they passed Joseph's family without remembering that the baby's name was Jesus. But those who found their way heard Mary speak that name to wise men, whose language she could not understand. Shepherds and sages knelt together to worship the little one, whose name is Jesus.
God with us. Speak his name.
it's Bethlehem for me. just before the final selection, two very familiar and important passages from God's Word. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Two men are describing Jesus Christ. One lived before his birth and looked forward to his coming. The other lived after his birth and looked back to his life and his accomplishments. Isaiah the prophet lived in a dark time and as the captain of a vessel in distress looks across the waters to see help coming. So Isaiah the prophet lifted the telescope of prophecy to his eye and he saw one Jesus advancing to the rescue and he exclaimed his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. The Apostle Paul had been dramatically saved on the road to Damascus. He had been so transformed by Jesus Christ. He was searching for an adjective to describe Christ. He thought of the adjective great. Then he thought marvelous. Then he thought that won't do. Others are called by those names. Then by inspiration he said, he is unspeakable and he is indescribable. Jesus Christ is wonderful and he is unspeakable in his birth. He was born as no other before him or after him. He was born of a virgin. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God. He is God incarnate, God wrapped in human flesh, wonderful in his birth, but he's also unspeakable in the magnetism of his personality and of his life. As metal filings are drawn to a magnet, so people were drawn to Jesus Christ. Everywhere he went, crowds thronged him. Among them the sick and the needy, the empty, the lonely, the suffering, they all sought his help and they all received it. There have been some very charismatic people in our day and in generations gone by, but there has never been anyone like Jesus. He was born of peasant parents. He never traveled very far from home. He never wore a sword. He never fought a battle. He's not a titled man of the schools. He's not associated with the rich. In fact, he never did anything that is normally associated with greatness. But all of the armies that have ever marched and all of the navies that have ever sailed, all of the parliaments that have ever sat and all of the kings that have ever reigned have never affected the life of people on planet Earth as much as that one solitary person that we sing about today, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is wonderful and he is unspeakable, not only in his birth and in his life, but in his sufferings and in his death. He didn't die as anybody else has ever died. His death was redemptive. He said, no man taketh my life from me. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up. He allowed himself to be crucified because Calvary was a divine necessity to save us from our sins. And as he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And he laid down his life that we might know him as wonderful and unspeakable and indescribable. And finally, he is also so in his victories. Three days later, he was raised from the dead. He is the Son of God. He is God incarnate. And the victories of Jesus Christ in the Gospels and throughout the centuries of church history have been so miraculous that no one has ever paralleled him. He opened the eyes of the blind. He unstopped the ears of the deaf. He caused the lame to walk and the paralytics to stretch forth their withered arms and their legs. He even raised the dead to life again. And his victories have only begun. 
because Jesus Christ is coming back the unspeakable gift of God the wonderful one of Isaiah and when he comes he's going to settle the destinies of men and nations this marvelous Jesus God's unspeakable gift have you received him if not I'm going to invite you right now to bow your heart with me and to bow your head and by an act of your will receive into your life this unspeakable wonderful Christ as your own personal Savior and Lord <laughs> which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. gentlemen, our music minister, Pastor Wayne Seward.